right. It's all about getting, getting understanding and living right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lucius McDowell Living Right Podcast. Tonight, we're going to jump off into the Word of God as it pertains to living right. We will be talking about a subject matter that is vitally important to every rightful relationship with God as a believer. And tonight, we're going to be dealing with the subject matter of walking in the Spirit, cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit, cultivating the fruit. I'm telling you, a lot of folk are walking, but let me tell you something. Some of that fruit is not ripe. Some of that fruit is not sweet. And I believe that God is saying to the body of Christ, we've got to get the fruit working right so that we can walk on higher levels and higher planes. I really believe that, you know, as we begin to tap into this night, I want you to be able to go back and examine yourself to make sure that you're walking right and you're cultivating the fruit. Everybody got to go back and look at where they are, look in the mirror, look in the mirror, look in the mirror, not at nobody else, but look at yourself because you know the type of fruit that you are bearing. Second Timothy, glory to God, the third chapter, the 16th verse, it teaches us that all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I read this every broadcast because I want people to understand that we have a responsibility, and that is we got to make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing so that we can get the inspiration that we need. But notice what the Scripture says. It says all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, by the Holy Ghost, y'all. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God is not leaving out the woman, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I don't know about you, but I want to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Why? Because while I live in the earth, I want to make sure that I am being the light that God wants me to be. God has created us to be the light in darkness. And I believe that the whole world is waiting for the, uh, the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God to come forth, to come forth, to come forth, bringing great fruit. Not acting like the world, but, but acting just like you have been really baptized in Jesus, acting like you are controlled by the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, people are perishing for the lack of knowledge, and I believe that sometimes the people, they don't know any better. When you don't know better, you can't do better. But when you know better, you do better. Now, open Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. That means that you have a responsibility to dig into the Word. You have a responsibility to feed your spirit, man, so that you'll know exactly those things that you need to be doing to make sure that you are getting what you need, what your spirit needs. And you know what? If you don't feed your spirit, guess what? It doesn't grow. And you don't feed your spirit by watching TV all the time and listening to the radio all the time. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So that means that, you know, we don't go by opinions. We don't go by radio talk shows because a lot of them are not hitting the Word of God. They're saying what they feel and they're saying what you should be doing but it's not the instructions in living right. I'm telling you, I need instructions on living right. And when I get my instructions on living right, that's when I will align my behavior with the Word of God. And as I align my behavior with the Word of God, God will begin to show me things that I need to do to make some major improvement. And let me just tell you that we are all a work in progress, which means that we got a lot of work to do. But guess what? As we begin to submit ourselves to the Holy Ghost, I really believe that we'll begin to walk in some power that God has already promised us, and we'll start seeing some things happen in our lives that will, guess what, make other people wonder, what do I need to do to get where you are? And guess what? We will tell them in a minute in a heartbeat. We didn't do it on our own. This is the work of the Holy Ghost living big on the inside of us. So let's just jump right into the Word of God tonight. I want to start right in Galatians. Galatians, the fifth chapter, starting with the 16th verse. And again, tonight, we're talking about walking in the Spirit, cultivating the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit, the fruit, the fruit. A lot of people want the gift, but they need to work on the fruit, 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 fruit. 
you know, Holy Spirit does the work of the giftings, but we have a responsibility in doing the cultivating of our fruit. We, 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 I, 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 I must examine myself every day. When I'm not walking in love, I got to examine myself. When I don't allow the joy to be exuberant into my life, I got to examine myself when peace is not there, when long suffering is not there. I got to look at those things when I'm not gentle, uh, when there's not goodness, when there's not a, the, the fruit of faith, when I'm not meek, when I'm not in temperance. I got to look at all nine of those things, and I got to be working it, working it, working it, working it, working it, working it, working it. And guess what? I'll be working on this until I go on to be with Jesus. I'll say you'll be working this until you go on to be with Jesus. And if you don't work it, you will end up being the same way. And you'll end up be governed by your flesh versus being governed by the Spirit. I just believe tonight that, that many people out there are listening tonight that you may struggle in certain areas. But let me tell you something. Struggle no more because when you get this word tonight, you're going to begin to put some things together. You're going to put puzzles in the right place. And guess what? The pieces of the puzzle are going to be put in the right place. And as they're put in the right place, you'll begin to see a clear picture of what our God is speaking unto us. Praise the Lord. So Galatians, the fifth chapter, started with 16, verse number 16. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other, so that we cannot do the things that we would. But if you be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse number 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you also in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Then I like verse number 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is... Notice he already told you what the flesh is, but he's going to tell you what the fruit of the Spirit is. He says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. you got to have love, people. Of God. And then he goes on and says, joy, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. He goes on and says, peace. He keeps saying, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. He goes on and says, long-suffering. He goes on and says, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Temperance, self-control. We were just talking about self-control on last Monday. Let me tell you something. What I feed off of, you know, is where God has taken us. He was telling us that, you know, we needed to make sure that we were maintaining our composure, that we maintaining the composure. We got to go back and cultivate our fruit because you might be okay in the in, 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 in the in the temperance side, but you very well may not be so cool and walking in love. So tonight I want you to see that all nine gifts Nine fruit of the spirits are, are very important in your life. And I'm going to make sure I'm not confusing anyone. Nine, all nine fruit of the, of the spirit is, is very important in your life. There's a difference between the fruit and the gifts of the spirit. Tonight we're talking about the fruit, walking in the spirit, cultivating the fruit of the spirit. Glory to God. So verse number 25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us walk in the spirit now i want to go back right quickly and talk about something right quickly because the fruit of the spirit is a phrase found in the bible over here in, in, in galatians it refers to nine attributes of the christian life inspired by the holy spirit living within us these attributes are love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control now i'm going to ask you right now how good are you with your fruit game tonight? Are you walking good in the love arena? Are you walking good in the joy arena? Are you walking good in the peace? Are you walking good in patience? Are you walking good with kindness? Are you good? Are you faithful? Are you gentle? Do you have self-control? And let me just say this. This is not about just you. How do you interact with other people? How do you interact with other believers? This is vitally, vitally important. When we seek the presence of God with humility and faith, we can experience the true joy and peace from living according to God's will. This is the way that God wants us to live. And guess what? This is the way we're supposed to be governing our lives. 
The fruit of the Spirit is something that we have to strive for daily. It, 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 it's a fruitful life in communion with our God. So that means that we just don't do it on Sunday morning. That's why it's so hard for so many people, because if you're not doing it every day of the week, it's going to be hard to fake it on one day of the week. And let me tell you, you got to get it down on Monday. You got to get it down on Tuesday. You got to get it down on Wednesday. And I'm not talking about just one of them. I'm talking about all nine of them. You got to make sure that you are acutely a conscious of all nine fruit working in your life. And if they are not, you got to get them up to the levels that they need to be. I say get them up to the levels that they need to be because a fruitful life in, in communion with God represents what God is looking for. For believers, for believers. Now, I just want to go back again and, and, and talk about again. It's just, you know, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, uh, and all those good things, meekness, temperance, a gift, such there is no law. But I, I, I like it when it says that this I say will walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's just talk about the flesh just for a minute so that we can kind of get that part out of the way because I think that this is uh, critical that we tap on to this because uh, in our bodies, we have to deal with the flesh. Flesh in the Old Testament symbolizes mortality and human life in the world. The Hebrew word used uh, for flesh is bazaar, B-A-S-A-R. In the New Testament, the Greek word is used sarx, S-A-R-X, which represented as the sin nature of humankind. Both words are parallel. Now, over in Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse, it says, present our bodies a living sacrifice. Why we present our bodies a living sacrifice? Because if we don't, the flesh will take over and will cause things to happen that are not good. But in Romans, the 6th chapter, the 12th verse, it lets us know sin should not reign in our bodies. Over in Romans, the 6th chapter, the 13th verse, it says, present your bodies as instruments of righteousness unto God, unto God, unto God, unto God. That means that you should be living for God. That means you should be doing those things that represent what believers should be doing. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 15th verse, it says, our bodies belong to God. So our bodies don't belong to the enemy. We were bought with the price, and that was the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Over in, in, in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, 19 verse, it says that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit lives big on the inside of us, and because he lives big on the inside of us, guess what? He will be producing after his own kind. So that means there will be fruit that will be produced as a result of the Holy Ghost living in us. Now, in, in, in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 20th verse, it said we were bought with the price. We just talked about that. 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy, the 2nd chapter, the 20th through the 21st verse, it says our bodies are holy and they are set apart uh, for the master's use. They're set apart for the master's use. But then he goes on and he begins to, to even uh, to hide in with what we've been talking about with the flesh. Romans, the 8th chapter, the 13th verse, it says, for if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And the only thing I'm saying tonight is in order for the fruit to be cultivated, there has to be some crucifixion of the flesh. You cannot let your flesh do what it wants to do because if it do what it wants to do, it will cause you to walk out of the will of God and you'll miss the will of God concerning your life. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss it. I want to be right in the perfect will of God, and I want to make sure that those areas that need to be perfected in my life, they are being perfected in my life. You ought to want to be perfected just as well. Remember what we said earlier in Second Timothy, the third chapter, the 16th to 17th verse, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, some things need to be corrected right about now. For instructions in righteousness, somebody needs some instructions in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Some perfection has to take place in order for us to be good at what we're supposed to be doing. Glory to God. Now, over in Matthew, the 26th chapter, the 41st verse, the Scripture teaches us, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. It goes on to say, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh 
is weak. The spirit is always willing and ready, but the flesh must be mortified. It must be crucified. It must be whipped in line with the word of God and kept under subjection. It needs to be kept under subjection. But even as the flesh is acting up, we're not going to put the emphasis on the flesh. What we're going to do is we're going to put the emphasis on walking in the spirit. Because the more you walk in the spirit, the more you get power, the more you get empowered, the more you are able to continue to overcome any scenario that comes your way. I love 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 27th verse. It says, but I keep my body under and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I don't want to be preaching to you. I don't want to be preaching to nobody. And guess what? I am not living up to what I am talking about. I want my life to be aligned with the word of God. And in so doing, that means I have to take inventory. I got to look into the law of liberty every day. I got to look into that word. I got to look into the mirror. And there's something about the mirror. The mirror, the perfect law of liberty is nothing but the word of God. And let me tell you something. It's just like going into a bathroom into a mirror. If you got some bumps on your face and you got some marks, guess what? Before you go out in public, you're going to do whatever you got to do to clean it up. And I really believe that that's what God is saying by the Spirit tonight. Clean up those things. Clean it up. Clean it up. Be better. Be better. Do better. Be better. Glory to God. Over in uh, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 13th verse, it tells us that, you know, we have to take authority over our flesh, let it be known that we won't fall into any kind of crazy temptations. If there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who was not tough for you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, also will make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So guess what? God is saying, I'm going to give you, I've given you the power to overcome. I've given you the power to win in every area of your life. Now, looking at verse number 22 and 23 of Galatians, the fifth chapter says, what the fruit of the Spirit is, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, the Greek word translated as fruit refers to the natural product of a living thing, of a living thing. Paul used fruit to help us to understand that the product of the Holy Spirit who lives inside every every born-again believer is real. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is produced by the Holy Ghost, not the Christian himself. The Greek word is singly showing that fruit is a unified, whole, not independent characteristic. As we grow, at all, as we grow, all the characteristics of Christ will begin to manifest in our lives. Yet, like physical fruit, it needs time to grow. The fruit of the Spirit will not ripen in our lives overnight, which means that this is not going to be an overnight sensation. In fact, this is not going to be an overday sensation. It's not going to be a weak sensation. This means that this is going to be a continual a continual examination of your life to make sure that you are making sure that no weeds are growing in your garden. Glory to God. And I'm going to ask you, when was the last time when you got all of the bad weeds out of your garden? Just like the physical fruit that needs time to grow, so with the fruit of the Spirit. And it will not happen overnight. However, like a successful gardener must battle against weeds to enjoy the, 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 the end result of a great uh, uh, harvest, we must constantly work. We must constantly examine. We must constantly make sure that we are aligning our behavior with the Word of God to get all the weeds of our old sinful nature that wants to choke out the works of the Spirit. And you got to be very careful because guess what? If you're not careful, you will have weeds around your seed, and you do not want weeds around your seed. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to reject those old sinful desires. We can say no to sin and accept the way out that God has faithfully provided for us. And we, we get this way out based on the following and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So as we give the Spirit more control of our lives, He began to do in and through us what only he can do to shape us and grow us to be just like Jesus. 
I like this because a lot of people just feel like if they put more emphasis on the flesh, that, you know, they will literally be uh, really, you know, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit, you know, opportunity to live. But it's got it backwards. No, you should be uh, you should be being sensitive to the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit will prompt you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will show you all things. And all you got to do is follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. As you follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, guess what's going to happen? Great things will begin to happen. Now, after Paul discusses, discusses the works of the flesh in Galatians, he begins to elaborate about the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in a believer's life. Now, in uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, he writes, but the fruit of the Spirit, he goes back and gives you all nine of them. And Paul previously described the works of the flesh. Now he tells us what the Holy Spirit wants to produce in us. Now, I want you to say to yourself, Holy Spirit wants to produce in my life something very great. And what a contrast there is between the flesh and the spirit. We talked about the flesh produces works. Uh, and, and, and that word works comes from the Greek word ergos, which implies hard work and hard labor. As noted earlier, glory to God, as noted earlier, life dominated by the flesh is filled with excess, imbalance, unhealthy, extremes, lazy, self-abuse, hatred, strife, bitterness, irresponsibility, and neglect, all those negative things. It is the hardest route for any individual, yet the flesh still cries out to be in charge, screaming to have its own way, demanding to be the boss. Got to be in charge. Got to be the one that's telling you what to do and how to do. On, on the other hand, a life dominated by the Holy Spirit is filled with benefits and blessings. So you notice I've not begun to even define the love and the faithfulness and the joy and all the stuff because I want you to understand that if you don't deal with this stuff first, foundationally, we will have some major problems. And I really believe that a lot of believers, they get born again and they forget about the fruit. They forget about the Holy Ghost who's working in them so that some great things can manifest out of their lives. Now, regardless of whether it is a plant let me go back here. I got ahead of myself. Look at what the, the Spirit produces. The, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, it produces fruit. The word fruit is from the Greek word karpos, which describes the fruit of a plant, the fruit of trees, or the fruit of one's body, such as a person's uh, children or offspring. Regardless of whether it is a plant or an animal or a human, all fruit is produced from some kind of seed. If there is no seed, there will be no fruit. And the kind of seed that is sown determines the fruit that will be produced in your life. You get what I'm saying? Every fruit produces after its own kind. Now, go over to Genesis, the first chapter. I can prove this point to you. Verse number 11. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding tree yielding fruit after his kind, after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, let me just break it on down for you. Apples always produce apples. Orange seeds always produce orange seeds. Dogs will always produce dogs. Cats will produce cats. Human produces humans. And the character of the seed will determine the fruit. I'll say it again. This is very important. The character, your character of the seed, it will determine your fruit. The moment you receive Jesus as your Savior by faith, God showed the Holy Spirit and his word into your heart like a seed. And you were spiritually born again by incorruptible seed of the word of God. And just like apples always produce apples and oranges always produce oranges, God's seed on the inside of you immediately began to produce God. It began to produce God. Hallelujah. The kind of seed always determines the outcome of the fruit. Therefore, you should expect your life to yield the fruits of the Spirit, for that is the seed God has sown in your heart. In your heart, you have received the Holy Spirit, and guess what? It should produce after its own kind. Now, 
Ask the question. Does a vine dresser worry about his grapes? Uh, vines might produce his oranges. Or, of course not. He does not or worry about his grapevine produces his grapes. Uh, he, he only worry. He knows that his grapevines is only going to produce grapes. Why? Because every seed again produces after its own kind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the same principle holds true in the spiritual realm. To get you what you want, you have to plant the right seed because seed always produces fruit after its own kind. So if God has sown his spirit and his word into your heart, you have every right to expect divine fruit to be produced on the inside of you. Now, if it's not sown in you, guess what's going to happen? No fruit is going to be on the inside of you. But the fruit that the spirit produced is wonderful, it's godly, it's fruit overflowing with blessings and life. And as you allow the Holy Spirit to produce these fruits in you, you'll find that people would love to be around you and they will find you to be a pleasurable experience. But if you ever notice where people who don't walk with the fruit of the Spirit, most people don't want to be around them. That's what I'm saying. It's time to inspect your fruit. It's time to go back in and get the weeds out because everybody should be walking in love, every born again believer, to the point where somebody want to be a part of you to get something from you. See, once they partake of the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, and the temperance. It is evident it's in your life. They will want to come back to get multiple servants of the fruit that you have to give. Nobody wants to be around eating bitter fruit. Have you ever gone to a grocery store and you noticed that, you know, you went to pick out the fruit and it didn't look good? If it didn't look good, you did not buy it. But if it looked good, I'm telling you, you would pick it up with a heartbeat and say, I'm taking that with me because I know. It is good stuff. So don't give away to the flesh and allow it to produce its other work in your life. Instead, yield to the Spirit and allow the seed of God, Spirit and Word, to produce the fruit of the Spirit in your life. You are the one who makes the ultimate decision of who is going to rule you, so you got to choose wisely today. One thing that I do like about this, it always taught us, Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He is going to not Force your hand in this direction. You got to make a decision that, you know, I want my fruit to be uh, right. I want my fruit to be uh, the way that God has already ordained it to be. I will do whatever is necessary to make sure that I'm listening to the Holy Spirit to give me the direction that I need so that fruit can be uh, produced in my life. Now, the question begins again, do you want to walk in a cruel, hard, bitter worse of the flesh, or would you prefer to mortify, kill it, get rid of the get rid of the, the flesh and allow the Holy Spirit to produce after God's own kind? And I want you to understand these are some things that you have to make a decision to do. It's left up to you, but only you will make that decision. The Holy Spirit is not going to make that decision for you. So as we begin to go to our first song tonight, want to just kind of go to one song number one called he never failed me yet he won't fail me now so uh if you guys just listen to this this will build your faith glory to god and you can begin to just be edified in jesus name amen
praise the Lord. I tell you what, you know, that just for the background seemed like it was singing, but it was saying some words that was saying, he never failed me yet. He won't fail me now, which means that if I'm in a situation where I'm waiting on God to do something, I got to be patient. So that means that I got to have that fruit of patience in place to get the manifestation of what he's already promised me. And if he said he was never going to fail me, he's going to bring it to pass. Guess what? He's going to bring it to pass. I got to stay in faith again, which is another what? There's a fruit there. And and if you don't have these fruits working, the fruit working, then that means that you end up forfeiting the very thing that God said that he would do in your life. Hallelujah. So we're going to jump right on into the word again because I want to go back in because I want to make sure that as we spend our final time tonight on the air, that we're able to really walk this thing out with you so you understand what does it mean to walk in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So Galatians 5, 16 says, Just I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now we did say, um, I wanted to read the, the, the fleshly uh, things over in the national, the, the new, the new national version. Verse 19 says, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition. Do you know anybody like that? Dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's in the NIV. Now, I just want to make sure that even as we walk in this out, I want you to hear this. He goes on and says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, how do we walk in the Spirit? The Greek word for walk here is peripatio. It means to walk. It means to tread around. It means to walk at large. It means to live, to deport oneself, to follow. And here he was speaking of living by conducting our actions according to and following the leading of the word of God as quickened to us by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the word of God agrees perfectly because the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the written word. Now, as we begin to live our lives according to the Holy Spirit and the word of God, that means we got to train our hearts to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost as he speaks to us. When he speaks to us, we got to know that it is he who is speaking, glory to God, and it's not your flesh. Now, according to 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 6th verse, it says that the Spirit is truth. Now, and in John 17, 17, it says God's word is truth. So we know that the Spirit is truth. God's word is truth. Now it says the word of God is truth. Spirit and life is going to bring life to you over in St. John, the 6th chapter, the 63rd verse. And then it says, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one over in 1 John 5 and 7. Now, in the last one, it says, Jesus was the word of God and was made flesh. We know that was in St. John, the first chapter, the first through the third verse, down to the 14th verse. Now, when people walk according to the spirit of God's word, glory to God, they are walking in the spirit. And if you ever get to a place where you decide that you want to walk contrary to God's word, you are not in the spirit. So that's why it's always vitally important for you to always connect with the word of God to make sure that you are getting spiritual food in your system so much so that you're able to uh, align yourself, align your behavior with the word of God. Walking in the true revelation knowledge of God's word as quickened to us by the Holy Spirit is the way we walk in the spirit. That's the way we walk in the spirit. When we do that, we reap the benefits, the promises that are already given to us through the word of God. Now, notice this. The deliverance from sin and its influence does not come from yourself. This can only be achieved through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we let the Holy Spirit control us, the Holy Spirit breaks the power of the flesh. I want you to know this. When you allow the Holy Spirit to control you, the Holy Spirit breaks the power of the flesh. 
So you don't try to deal with the flesh. You just let the Holy Spirit do what needs to be done. Let the Holy Spirit do what it needs to be done. God provides us with the power of the Holy Ghost to enable us to perform his will. So when God gives us that power, he's given us that power so that we are enabled to win in every situation. It is important for us to notice that this verse does not say denying the flesh will not produce walking in the spirit, but walking in the spirit will produce denying of the flesh. I'll say that again. Walking in the spirit, as I'm led by the Holy Spirit, it will produce me denying the works of the flesh. This is a subtle difference to some, but the difference is truly profound. You know, as a whole, most religious teaching always teach that you can overcome your flesh, and there's a notable increase in the presence and the power of God in your life. That was what the Pharisees of Jesus' day uh, taught, and the Jews of Paul's day taught, but this is not the truth. As we experience more of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, the influence of the flesh is diminished. So that means that as I experience Holy Spirit working in me, through me, victory comes in that order. And victory has to come in that order. If it doesn't, we don't get the Spirit as a result of overcoming the flesh. But having the Spirit results in overcoming the flesh. It's similar to how a dark room is filled with light. The darkness isn't shoveled out and then light comes. The light is simply turned on and darkness ends up fleeing. Uh, much of religion, the religious preachers are used to, to much of religion preaches to us to stop sinning and then the Holy Spirit will come and empower us. That's not the way it works. We can more get rid of the power of the flesh on our own than we can get rid of the power of darkness without light. We first have to receive the working power of the Holy Ghost in our lives by grace. And then the union with the Holy Spirit breaks the power of the flesh. This is very important. The key to breaking the dominion of the flesh is to appropriate the power of the Holy Spirit through faith while the flesh is still giving you problems. So even the flesh might be giving you problems, you allow Holy Spirit to give you the direction that you need to overcome it. And as you obey Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will begin to break to pieces all of those things in your flesh that are giving you trouble. Those of us who are waiting on the Spirit to come after we have seduced the flesh will be waiting for a long time. Because that is not the way that it's supposed to be. Look at verse number 17. It says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the thing that you would. Now, the word lust here is used primarily in a very negative way to describe unlawful sexual desires. However, the word literally means an overwhelming desire. Or craving, and that could be absolutely anything. Now, the New International Version translation says that it's the desires what is contrary to. Notice that in this verse, Paul said that the spirit also lusteth against the flesh. So we know that it is speaking of some unlawful activities. It's just expressing that the flesh constantly desires things contrary to what the spirit of God desires, and vice versa. They are opposed to each other in their own nature. Serving one will keep you from serving the other one. That means that you have to make a decision. That means that you have to make a choice in terms of what will you give up. Will you give in to your flesh or will you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into all things? I'm telling you right now, my time is literally up tonight. However, as I end this session tonight, I, I believe right now that you know this will be a great opportunity for you to listen again to a song entitled, I Got It. I got the power of the Holy Spirit living big inside of me. I got the power to win over every scenario because Jesus is giving me the victory. Not only is he giving me the victory, but he has given you the victory. We're going to continue this teaching because I truly believe that it is vitally important for each and every listener to get concepts and get, get these concepts under your belt so that you can begin to recognize you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that God has placed Holy Spirit to live big on the inside of you. And because he lives on the inside of you, he produces the fruit. He produces fruit after his own kind. Seed after his own kind. Seed after his own kind. 
C C C F is his own kind. It's nothing more than the very thing that he said that he would do for us. That is the love, that is the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, the temperance. All nine of those fruits will be evident in your life. So as you listen to the, the last song tonight, I got the victory. I want you to walk in that victory. We'll see you this time. The next time on Lucius McDowell with the Right Podcast next Monday, same time. Glory to God. Amen. Of an old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save someone like me Have you heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning And if you repent of all your sins, you'll win the victory. Oh, I've got it. I've got the victory. Yes, I do. I've got it. Over the enemy. Yeah, yeah. I've got it. Jesus, I got it. About his healing of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. If you cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. Jesus.
I'm walking in nothing but authority, and it is victory. 